let's uh, start this again. Um, my company, 2IT GmbH, uh, we do IT support in the broadest sense you could imagine. And um, we, we founded our company four years ago, and uh, it was a very fresh start, so there's, there was basically nothing, just the, just the, the challenge of uh, solving IT problems. We had already a handful of customers, and um, we looked for, for a software solution which would guide us through this growing part of building a business. Um, we found ERP Next in around 2016, I think I, I saw it the first time, and uh, started heavily implementing it in 2017. Our company has very strong focus on open source software and tools in, in total, so the, when, when we look for solutions, we always check if these are open source or not, and uh, this is definitely a reason for us to use them or not to use them, if it makes sense. We have uh, developed an, an app called IT Management for ERP Next. Um, we've developed it with uh, Raphael from Alive in this room, and uh, also Lars from LibraCore. And uh, I'd like to show you in my presentation today, sort of, it's a mixture of how we built this app, how we had to find this process we, we set this app to, and um, sort of found our own business process as well, and found out how to work effectively. Again, we do full service IT. Um, customers of ours would be doctors, would be engineering uh, companies, would be lawyers, would be even uh, some private people, or yeah, pretty much anything. Um, we do consultation, purchase of soft and hardware, and um, as I said, mostly small and medium businesses. Our day-to-day -day work in uh, IT support, as you might all of, uh, you know, you might be probably the, the guy on the other side of the phone. Um, this is our day-to-day -day work. So we track problems. We get them by phone, by email. Um, we have to look them up, see if we can solve them because we already know about them or research them, uh, look in Google, read manuals, etc. Um, we solve the problems. We document the problems and uh, document the solutions as well and um, bill all that at the end so we can uh, make a living from this. The challenge we face every day in this day-to-day -day work is uh, managing complexity. So I think this was a quite good uh, example of what can actually happen and why it happens. And there were two different laptops on this, and there's different software, and it's getting behind these things. How do they work? How are they all connected? Is it, you know, was it a problem with the laptop, with the Beamer, with the software? We might not know. It might take a long time. Um, and the important part is mostly documenting what was actually the problem and making this accessible to other people. As you can see, identifying and narrowing it down. Um, I guess we did a good job on this. Uh, other tasks can take a lot, a lot longer to solve. Um, a documentation, I'm not sure if Martin might need one later on for this problem. We'll see, maybe open, open an issue with us. Um, Communication is obviously a big part. This is a very general thing. Communication is something we need in every scale. I think in the, in the Fortschritt uh, presentation earlier, this was a very big part of implementation, is communication. You have to talk to people, you have to get them on board, you need them to follow you, to, I think, mostly understand your idea. Not fully, you know, if they're on board 80%, you can always... Uh, Try and try and get them for the rest of the 20%. Um, but it's important to talk to them all the time, literally all the time. And uh, for us, obviously, important billing our work at the end. Um, I wrote here the right things at the right time. We had the challenge that if you manage complexity and have several people working on several projects with several customers. Customers can just call our technicians and they get their problem solved pretty much straight away. Now, this is obviously something that is worth a lot 
to me as a company and to my customers. So they're not in some hotline, they don't have to wait for hours, they don't open a ticket and get an answer that the ticket has been opened the next day. Um, they pretty much get a solution straight away. Now, the trouble is, when do I build these things? Do I build them as soon as the problem's solved, at the end of the month, the end of the week? What kind of contract do I have with my customers? These are all questions which are very individual, especially because if you have so many different customers, and uh, as Martin was saying earlier as well, this, this why do we do these things with certain customers, these, these are questions that I guess will always be there because customers are very individual. Some are terrible, but they pay well. Some are very, very friendly, but they pay very, 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 very badly. And uh, so this is always a challenge we, we're facing. The solution we see for this problem is obviously if you manage to hone your own process. Um, I guess all businesses are process driven. They don't really, I noticed they don't really change. They don't really defer. They just sort of come up in a different way. They look different, they might be in a different color, might be a different day, but mostly the process is the same. And uh, also here again, the documentation is uh, important uh, to us that we, we manage all these IT assets. So we have to know where this, where this projector is, what make it is, the life, lifetime of the, of the bulb, all these things are important to us. And um, those things are something that we need to store in a database, which needs to be very accessible. So it has to be easy to use for my technicians. It has to be easy read, you know, not because some of these devices, you, any technician under you will know that you can connect to them on an HTTP, go over the browser, all these things, but it's different every time. And um, we needed a system where I can sort of collect all this information to access all these devices very simple, in a simple way. Again, communication is very important. Some people just know, oh yeah, you want to connect to that device, use SSH. Some people know that because, I don't know, they can read it on the outside or it's the right color or whatever. Um, I don't know all these things. I don't want to know all these things. I would just like to know where to sort of look it up and uh, be, able to, be able to quickly, quickly get onto that device, solve the problem, and then again, send a bill. I have uh, put a pretty much uh, standard business process here. This is, I'd say, the process which 99% of us, if that's enough, do day in, day out. This can be a doctor, a lawyer, my business, can be project management, software developing. This, at the end of the day, is what we do. Um, this is how we get our money. This is how we're able to survive as a business. What I found in just, just you know, learning how my business works, learning how to, how to attend to my customers, how to attend to my colleagues, how to get an issue onto a bill that it's actually invoiced, um, I noticed there is one question mark in that whole thing. Um, and it's somewhere between a sales order and an invoice. Um, I'd like to talk, to talk to you about that in a second. So this question mark I set here, I'd say it's somewhat individual for every business. Um, it's never quite the same. This could be... Yeah, how a doctor treats a customer, how a carpenter treats his customer, how good software is written, how good an uh, article is written, how good a shelf is made. Um, this is something which really depends on who does it and how good they are doing those things. Um, this is definitely the part where the work is done, I've noticed, because for me, you know, sending a bill is not really work being done, it's just finishing something. And um, also, I, I put down friction here. This is, this is the part where a lot of friction is call, uh, caused. 
again, communication is a very, 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 very big part. Um, just to have this process, you know, because this question mark is right in the middle of this process, it has to be able to go right through that process and uh, be able to be billed at the end. Um, at the end of the day, I think if you are able to understand this question mark in your business, then you will be successful with your business. Because people have asked me, you know, why, why did I do that? Why did I open my own business? It's a very risky deal. It's not very easy to do in Germany. But um, at the end of the day, I noticed you could, you could open a bakery tomorrow. Now, a bakery is something very, very common here in Germany. And people would say, why would you want to do that? There's loads of bakeries around. There's no market. And uh, I'm convinced there is a market, because if you open a bakery and you're a good baker and your product sells, and you'll find a way how to sell it. Because if you, if you have a good product and uh, don't waste time on all these process things which cause friction, which uh, use up a lot of time and cost, thus cost a lot of money, I think you are able to concentrate on your challenge, on your business, which will then again make you successful because you are only concentrating on your business and not on the bullshit which is all around that. Now, our question mark, I've talked about this already a little. Um, we manage hard and software, user accounts, configuration items, which would be laptops, projectors, could even be a fridge. Nowadays, you know, if you have a fridge, it's a smart fridge. For us, it's a configuration item. It has something to do in our network, gets important for us. Um, we gather all that in so-called solutions. Backups, obviously, are a very important uh, thing for companies to be able to have a good, good night's sleep. And um, locations is one part, managing locations. We, we mostly work remote, I'd say 80%. We don't drive out to a customer. And uh, for our technicians, ideally, if you, get the, if you get one of our guys on the phone, he will be able to tell you what IT assets are in this room without ever been, being actually here present. Um, and uh, this, this question mark we have, I, I learned earlier, um, is not the ideal way, but maybe we will narrow down and find a good uh, solution together is uh, this IT management app we built. So beyond this standard for us is this IT management. Again, you can see this, you can see this table as, as this question mark. Um, we receive issues from our customers or from a monitoring process from some server, some email. Um, we have to plan all that. Obviously, we are very heavily involved in change. So you can't just update uh, an, an OS of a, of a server without taking the risk of causing some other problems which, which uh, come up in, say, step three, four, or five. And uh, so we have to carefully plan these things um, and delegate these things to the right people who actually know what they're doing. Because there again, our business, as you all know, in IT is very complex. There's very, very, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of different assets you have to remember. Um, executing is just once these, once these tasks are assigned to people, uh, they need to be done. Obviously, no one person can do all these things. You need a certain amount of people to be able to manage. Uh, manage that challenge, and uh, at the end, finishing finishing for me is being able to speak to, you, speak to your technicians and say, okay, this is actually done. Have you thought about this, this, and this, and that? And uh, once that's done, you can take that, communicate to your customer, tell them it's actually done, it's ready, and uh, he won't be surprised if he becomes that bill. And um, following through these four steps, Documentation, communication, knowledge transfer, and timesheets, which is part of uh, documentation, is key to our business. Because um, documentation, I guess it's clear, we just have to be able to 
follow through these things and comprehend on those things that we actually did and changed and that we know where these, where these, uh, where these changes in step three, four and five happen. Um, communication, just talking with one another, finding the quickest solution is probably talking to people. Have you had this problem before? Do you remember that server with that customer, with that person? How did you do that last time? I'm missing this one little key feature um, to solving the problem. Then again, knowledge transfer is just is communicated. It's communica communicated over this documentation, knowing how these things work. So. Say there, there is another speaker after me and this thing doesn't work. Obviously, the best thing is to ask uh, him if he can help you out and solve the problem. And uh, ERP Next helps us to do this because obviously it's tracked who solved the problem and it's written down. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the introduction to our, our app. It's sort of the, the history, how we got there, how we got there to have this, uh, to find this solution, which is worth a lot to us. And um, I'd like to do a live run on this system, just show you how we work with it. For those of you who haven't really seen ERP Next so far, I've noticed this was a, the whole day wasn't really a hands-on day. Um, I'd like to do some hands-on now. Um, here we go. By the way, if there's any questions in between, feel free to ask, please. So, yeah, why is it still an app? I mean, uh, ServiceNow is a big company that is making billions and billions, I don't know how much, but, you know, this could be a great utility for many companies that want to, or that are in the business of something like yours. Yeah. And, you know, they might want a default on top of accounting, yada, yada, yada. Also this. Mm -hmm. So why, uh, is there a special reason why um, this is not, um, not part of the core as well? And I have no, I'm agnostic, you know, uh, just a curious, curious question. All good. Um, thank you for that question. I talked to the, to the ERP Next guys earlier about exactly this, and... Um, they did, they did tell me, okay, you, you know, that part you've solved here is uh, based in assets. That's, that part you've sold here is part of items. And um, this is something we, we never did. We never called ERP Next and said, you know, let's, let's suss out my problem and uh, find a solution for that and show me how this works inside ERP Next. My approach was obviously open source has this thing of it's free, you don't have to pay to get it. So it's, very accessible. But then again, you do, and it sometimes could be a mistake also to try it out yourself completely. And um, if you try it out yourself completely, you'll just go through this experience of learning and knowing, okay, I could use that, but it's missing this. I could use that, but it's missing that. And you slowly find out, okay, ERP Next has a solution here, but it's not really what I need. And um, focusing on IT management, there are assets in ERP Next, and it is kind of what you need. But it's, for my feeling, we have a focus on a different thing. And um, for example, the, the wording is important. And if I tell my guys these, these, all these configuration items and solutions from tomorrow onwards, they're called assets, all of them, they might say, no, I don't want to do that, because they have to sort of change their language in day-to-day -day work. And, um, our approach was use the language we talk and put them into the system. And then we did notice on the way, okay, there are things that are already in here, but they're not exactly the same. And um, so we just went on building it. Yep. Again, uh, mm -hmm. would you do it differently? Um, would I do that differently? If I had the time to, yes, I would. Now, so if I had, if I had the time to, to get consultation and uh, already have the team, the, the, the team size I have now, 
I would probably get someone, get, you know, call here up and next, say, look, I have a, a team of six. This is my industry or work in. Please help me implement this system. And they would probably come up with a solution pretty quickly. For me, it was, we started as a one, one and a half guy kind of thing, and it grew over time. And we noticed, okay, you know, when, when you're a one-man show, you don't have this challenge. It's everything in your head. If someone asks you that server in that room, you're like, yep, I know what you're talking about. I even know the IP address to that server. But once you sort of scale, that doesn't work anymore. And um, in this sc scaling process, obviously, it's not like, okay, I have a second guy. Let's spend 10,000 euros on software consultation. I couldn't do that. So this sort of this natural, natural growth. And um, what was very important, which you will be able to see in a minute, is uh, which was very important to me, that we're very, very close to ERP Next. So we weren't trying to reinvent it. There's people out there you know, installing Frappe and then building their own thing on there. That wasn't our intention. We use all these ERP Next features and just sort of added it. Yeah. Does that answer your question? No. Okay, so this is definitely one uh, very valuable thing. I can use his laptop and just sign into my ERP system. I'd say most, most systems do, do not really allow this. So um, this is a test version we installed on uh, version 12. So let me get this slightly bigger. Yeah, does that work? And um, as I said, there's a lot of features already in ELP Next. Um, we focus here on, on issue tracking, on, uh, on billing. You saw that process earlier, quotation, sales order, then what happens in between and then the billing in the end. Um, the process we're, we're now onto, which, which will be implemented uh, in January uh, 2020, and uh, yeah, with these implementations, again, communication is a big part. I've been criticized for changing things overnight, so I'd sit down in the evening, look at the system, and go, okay, we can do that, and change it, and just tell them on a Monday morning, okay, we're doing it this differently today. Um, I've learned from that. I've been sort of stopped from my colleagues as well who say, okay, at least give us a week's notice that this will come so we're not completely overwhelmed. Um, issues come into the system via email, via phone. If I'm on site, a customer will just talk to me because they're too lazy to send an email or whatever. Um, and this we would all uh, track in issue tracking, which is uh, a core part of ERP Next. Um, I've set up some demo data just to demonstrate today. Um, yeah, standard issue. I can set uh, priorities. I can set uh, the, cu the customer will be automatically read depending on the domain which the email is sent from. And uh, this is already a feature, this IT management table, we call it. This is a feature we built in. And, um, this houses all these IT assets we use. And uh, the challenge is, like this, a customer will say, I have a problem with my CAD software on my workstation. That's all, that's all the information you get. He won't tell you what the software is called, what operating system he has, when the, when the problem occurred. It's just general experience with the people. Mostly the call is, Wolfram, I have a problem. Nothing is working anymore. And uh, to define this, nothing is working anymore, um, we're able to select these uh, items. Say this is a workstation. Where is it? Here we go. And we could say the solution is affected, which is CAD. I can uh, make some notes here. And uh, I could uh, ask the customer for workstation ID, and I'll check that. So I know it's the right computer. I know it's that solution. Um, now where I know which computer it is, I might, might even be able to. Uh, hang on, this is wrong.
to see the, the program. You know, this is definitely an experience part. Um, check this. Okay, so there's just a general description. You have all the all the general general references. You can uh, add it to a project. For us, for example, we have contracts with our customers where we just uh, bill bill time, which comes up. So this is uh, we started using projects and tasks, but that was just in a way too big and too much to do. Um, Mario was saying earlier it's very important to get this click time down. Yeah, this this should really go with ease because it's not really the work we're doing. It's just the sort of tool we're using, and um, I can select the project where it would go in, and uh, yeah, save this, make an IT ticket from it. This is the assigning part, the planning part. Now I can do all this all this planning here with this workstation. This is something someone has to do who's experience with the customer who, who's able to ask the right questions. And um, then I can define all these things. This is uh, a little bit stupid at the moment, but um, there's my name behind this. You'll see it in a minute. I can assign this to someone. Please get in contact. Notify him by mail set when it's supposed to be done. This is a feature for all of you who know ERP Next. You're able to assign. You can see Assign to on the top left-hand corner. Um, you're able to just do this in one step. This was important to me to do this in one step. And um, if I create the IT ticket, you'll be able to see the status uh, has closed. I can go on to the next issue. My job isn't solving these issues. It's just planning these issues. Now, Thomas, who I assigned this ticket to, uh, would see this, get an email in his inbox, see the problem here, and uh, get all the information he needs, basically. He sees the priority. He sees all the contact data without clicking into the next doc type. So in this, you can straight away see the number he has to dial, the email he has to write. He sees the, the project. Uh, he sees the description of the problem. He sees this list again, and uh, if there's emails attached, he'll be able to see the emails. And obviously, if he communicates with the customer, he will send emails from this ticket. So it's all in one spot. Um, he can then make some changes here. Make some changes. Um, tick this as well. So he has a checklist which will run through the whole pr process um, till it's all done. Now, the next step would be to make an IT service report, we call it. And this IT service report is something we would communicate with the customer as well. So a lot of the times, a customer, this is very, very, very common in uh, craftsmanship, that they would come around and they want to see what this guy did. So someone will call me and say, yeah, one of your guys was here, here two hours this morning, but what did he actually do? And um, with good customers, they say, OK, I know your work is good and it's fine, and I don't need this documentation. Other customers will say, OK, I need, I need this, this uh, proof what, what you actually did. So I can give him this proof, set the date of when he started, have this date. Um, as you might have noticed, this list just got shorter. There's just this one item left. So all the checked items won't come up on this. The idea behind it is he doesn't have to work on things that have already been done. And uh, he can add information here and um, maybe add another And um, finish these up. He would uh, talk to the customer and solve the problem. Further down, you'll find um, further references. You can see, once again, the project. If you do work with projects, you plan these things in single tasks. You're still able to use this. So this was what I'm trying to stress earlier, that this is 
integrated in ERP Next process. There's nothing which substantially changes it at this point. I can save this, submit it, and um, I'll just go back to the ticket. All this information which I put in there will be transferred back to the ticket. So I have this list all filled. Um, I have this text down here, so I know what he actually did without having to go on this IT service report. And um, I have the timesheet in the background, which is also ERP Next standard and uh, can be built in the usual process, which will follow on in ERP Next. And um, I guess, hang on, I'll show you this one more time, this process. What I'd like to stress is that this is just this question mark we've filled with basically two doc types, as you've seen. And um, it's definitely a game changer for us. Questions? Well, I would uh, like to put the questions right with Martin and uh, with Gunnar right now. And just finish, uh, say thank you for that presentation right now because we are already over time. Okay. But, uh, okay, questions, please hold them just a few minutes. And when Martin is going to come, you can ask them uh, as well. So thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Applause.